It's been almost 20 years since the bombing of the federal building in downtown Oklahoma City on April 19, 1995. It's a story that's been told many times, and there are many ways to tell this story. The Oklahoman and OETA have partnered on a documentary that will air on April 19th. It's called Resilience. Take a look. With regard to this proceeding, basically there are four elements that I have to uh, uh, receive information regarding. In Joining me now from OETA, Mickey Smith, production manager for OETA and the Oklahoma Network, and Paige Dillon, producer for News OK and the Oklahoma. Ladies, thanks for your time this morning. We appreciate it. Thank you. Various screenings have been taking place across the state. Mickey, I'll start with you. Um, let's start with some of the locations. Why were those chosen? And um, who all has attended so far? We've had two of those screenings, right? Right. We uh, had our first screening in Woodward, Oklahoma, and we also had a screening in Perry. And the reason for the different locations was because OETA is a statewide network, and we felt it was important to take this story that while it happened in Oklahoma City, it really affected the entire state. And we wanted to be able to take it out to communities that were impacted. Um, there were people who were lost in Woodward. Obviously, Perry uh, is where Timothy McVeigh was caught um, by Sheriff Charlie Hanger. So those two places were important for us to go to, but we'll continue the screenings uh, with four other locations, uh, Oklahoma City, Tulsa, Lawton, and McAllister. And the Oklahoma City screening will be Monday at OCU. That'll be at 6.30 p.m. Paige, how was the reaction last night in Perry? Um, it was well received. We got a lot of positive comments. Um, they liked the, the storyline of the documentary and um, some friends of people who were featured in the documentary were, uh, were there and very appreciative as well. Let's talk about that storyline I mentioned at the top of this. There are many ways to tell this story, and there are a million stories to be told, very impactful, you know, hard, to, hard to explain type stories. Mickey, what was some of the approach to the storyline taken specifically for resilience? One of the things we really wanted to do was uh, to give people an opportunity, maybe some people who had been lesser known in the early years of the bombing, uh, in the immediate aftermath, and the few years that followed. Because we all heard the figureheads and the politicians and, and the headline makers, and, and rightly yeah. so. Yes, and that was the time and space for them to be out front. But 20 years later, we really wanted to find those lesser known stories of people to really capture their emotional journey over the last 20 years. So from the moment the bomb went off, how they were personally affected and how they were able to move forward over the last 20 years, while of course, never forgetting um, what had happened, but life must continue. So how were they able, these family members, uh, rescue workers, survivors, how were they able to move forward after such a defining moment in their life? This is a pretty big production. A lot of legwork goes into it. You know, and you guys were the lead uh, producers on this. Paige, walk us through some of the legwork on how far back we went to schedule these interviews and, and all the, you know, the logistics that went into that. Um, well, discussions about the project initially started 18 months ago. So we just, you know, talked about, you know, what we wanted to achieve, what were some of the questions we had. Um, and then from there, uh, we did a lot of research through our archives. Uh, Jacqueline Cosgrove, a reporter here at The Oklahoman, helped a lot with the research and lining some of those folks up. So uh, we spent a lot of time making phone calls, um, finding, trying to find first responders, uh, families, survivors. Uh, bring up a good point. The Oklahoman has vast archives, and OETA also has a ton of footage from that time. Uh, remind me of the editor's name, because he did a really jo good job of piecing this together. Jeff, Jeff Marevo is the person who put all of the video portion of this together, and he did an incredible job. He really did, and there's a lot of moving parts to this, and you guys did a fine job lining up those interviews, the questions, and, and producing this. I thought Frank Keating was really good in this. A lot of times a politician will give you the, the public line, but he was pretty frank, so to speak, in his comments and, and provided good sound bites. On the other hand, Brian Painter, the emotional side. You get both of those voices in this documentary. It was pretty powerful. It was, and I think um, providing a space for people to 
openly share the emotion of that day and the 20 years that follows, it's, it, first off, it's not something that a lot of people will open themselves up to. And the fact that Governor Keating um, was really so honest with us with his emotions, these were his feelings, how he felt in the days and the weeks and the years that followed. And Brian, to me, while you know the, the victims and their families obviously are uh, emotionally very important to this story, Brian brought a heart to it from an outsider looking in point of view on how it really affected the reporters and the people who had to cover this. And, and he was so honest with his emotions. It, it, he, to me, is the emotional heart of this story. He really gave some heartfelt responses. Paige, another storyline to this documentary uh, of resilience is uh, the education, the teachers, the kids, the ones who weren't born back when the bombing happened in 1995. Yeah, we, um, we reached out. That was one of the main themes we really wanted to cover is how are the younger generations learning about. So we talked to um, elementary school teacher, high school teacher, and a middle school teacher. Um, the difficulties in teaching that lesson because some of those kids, they've lost relatives, aunts, sure. uncles, grandparents, and so how they approach that and just the sensitive subject matter as a whole, kids' reactions, questions. Um, and, you know, they're very open about how they teach it. One, one teacher uses the kids' marathon as a way to kind of ease them into that discussion. It's an all-year project, but once they get to April, they, they really start to talk about, you know, what happened. And, the, and those are third graders, so that's a whole different approach to how to talk to third graders versus a high school student. Paige Dillard, Mickey Smith, guys, job well done on the documentary, and thank you for your time today. Again, the screen here in Oklahoma City is Monday at 6.30 over at OCU. Resilience will air on OETA on April 19th at 6 p.m., and I believe it'll be available online after that as well. And one last thing, Mickey, do you want to touch on how people can then share their comments and experiences with us? Absolutely. So one of the uh, important things about this is almost everyone who was here and alive at that time has an April 19th story. You remember where you were, um, how you felt, what you did. And so one of the pieces of this project is to encourage others to go online and share their story with us. The Oklahoman and OETA have a resilience website set up and through that website you have the opportunity to upload uh, your own photos if you took them, videos, and also to type essays about what your experience was so that we can have a collective memory, really, of what this was for Oklahoma. Very good, ladies. Once again, thanks for your time. Job well done on the documentary. The has ripped through the Alfred Murrow Building in downtown Oklahoma City. That is a federal building that houses many federal officers, and about a third, the northern third of the building, is gone. The devastation again in downtown Oklahoma City is absolutely incredible. I have declared an emergency in Oklahoma City. An apparent car bomb ripped the front off a federal office building and spread injuries and damage for blocks. The federal office building attacked held 550 employees today as well as a daycare center. Officials on the scene have said the explosion appeared to be caused by a car bomb. A bombing in Oklahoma City was an attack on innocent children and defenseless citizens. It was an act of cowardice, and it was evil.